Dodge your links on the metaverse. Colin, you definitely made the right choice. You need to get your reggaeton on. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Even if you don't understand the reggaeton, it like, it speaks to the soul, you know? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Diego. And welcome to the Superest Podcast, where we're going to be talking about what's hot and what's not in the world of digital. And today, do you know who we have here today, Lisa? No, I'm very excited though. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, it's a guest of mine. Uh, Bolin is here. Uh, Bolin is actually um, heading, spearheading a project with uh, Glozo. Um, and um, they are just launching now, preparing to launch Play One. Uh, which is an amazing project from what I've read. Uh, and it's, um, you know, it's it's here to revolutionize and, and, and uh, kind of like introduce NFTs to the music entertainment space. Uh, is that right, Volan? Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. It's a pleasure having you. Uh, absolute pleasure as well. Can you tell Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, first of all, I was actually, you know, um, I was a, uh, Snooping around a little bit, um, and uh, you're you're actually from a law background, is that right? How did you get into the NFT space? I do come from a law background, and actually, while I was in law school, uh, I, I had the opportunity to work at Miami's first incubator and accelerator for startups. It was called Venture High, and I worked there the entire time I was in law school. I helped build out their entrepreneur educational curriculum, uh, which essentially meant I would go out and research different topics like how to run a lean startup, what are some intellectual property considerations for a startup moving to the U.S., uh, what type of corporate formation should I look into, anything from from that to like, how do I get Instagram followers? And so I got a lot of very quality time, uh, one-on-one time with co-founders and with uh, investors and kind of uh, some government level officials in Miami that really opened my eyes to what you can do through entrepreneurship how supportive of a community it is. And um, and actually, that was the beginning of, of my journey because I kind of realized around that same time that I'd much rather prefer this this lane of life, really, than, than maybe the traditional legal path. And um, funny enough, I actually had friends of mine in law school, you know, everybody asked, what do you want to practice? What do you want to, what kind of law do you want to do? And I would always tell them, I don't think I want to practice law. I think I'd rather you know, run a company and be able to hire you, my lawyer friends, because, you know, now I know all these lawyers for everything I ever need. And, uh, and funny enough, we've come full circle. And now one of our in-house general counsels is, um, well, sorry, our local, uh, our local counsel here. Uh, one of the partners is a friend of mine from law school. So, um, I kind of got exposed to that world back then. And, uh, when my CEO, uh, Tarek, when he wanted to venture into the NFT business, uh, I was already doing some compliance work for one of his other businesses, and he very quickly appointed me as VP of operations, and then a couple of months later as COO. Colin, you definitely made the right choice, because I started my career in law as well. I was a tax lawyer, and goddamn, it's so boring, so... Well, <laughs> I have a few friends in the same shoes. Oh, honestly. <laughs> and I think as well, nothing really changes in those industries. Like law is pretty slow to move and it's obviously just very much like tied to legislation. So it's pretty dry. Whereas the NFT space, Web3, digital, it's honestly moving so fast, especially, I don't know why at this moment in time, I feel like one day is equivalent to like a year, like that much seems to happen. Yes. It, that's Web3 for you. Yeah, it's actually crazy. And so I know that you're working in Web3 at the moment. Can you tell us a little bit about your project, which is something in the music industry, which is really exciting? Yes. Um, and actually, we were inspired to do this from our network of, of musicians and friends that, that were in the industry that through conversations and meetings with them realized that they're starving. Like if you're not a top 20, 30, 50 artist and you have millions and millions and millions of streams... You can't survive without live shows and tours because that's the that's the lion's share of, of your earnings there and the merch sales that you do in real life. So, you know, graphic designers and visual artists were the first ones to really start implementing NFTs. And that's what that's how it came to prominence, um, because they were in the same boat. You can't go to no galleries were open. 
You can't do exhibitions. You have to find a new way to engage your fan base. And I consider NFTs kind of a gift from the blockchain, really, that uh, that enables creators to monetize and, and uh, their craft and also engage their fans on a global scale in real time. So um, that's that was kind of our inspiration was that, you know, at the time, and we started the company in April of 2021, uh, at that time, there was, you know, everybody was big on the JPEGs and those collections, but the music space was still kind of wide open and, and, and new and really kind of unexplored. There was a couple of companies starting to dabble in it, uh, but we saw a few kind of holes in their approach, uh, which we mostly came to those conclusions from a number of conversations with fellow artists and other techies. And we realized that an NFT player, uh, a functioning and functional uh, way for consumers and collectors to actually enjoy this these NFTs, not just on their computer, not having to log into each different account that you have and, and trying to play it there. Um, we needed a, a, essentially like when the iPod first came out and you had all these MP3s floating around that you downloaded maybe on Napster or LimeWire or whatever. LimeWire. Yeah. I remember LimeWire very well. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> and, uh, and remember, you could just download all that stuff into iTunes and put it on your iPod and you had photos on there, you had music, you had videos. And so essentially we took the same concept for NFTs and we're, we built a, a, an NFT multimedia player called Play One. And around Play One is essentially an entire ecosystem uh, where artists can come on, create an account, mint their songs, upload them into the platform. And then the, the collectors are the ones that also the artists that are putting this stuff out, you know, they're the ones utilizing the player as well. Um, we, we wanted to create a, a free download app to make to take essentially what the iPod did for MP3s to do that for NFTs and, and really enable kind of the mass adoption that's needed for this stuff to become as mainstream as the JPEGs right now. And so that's that's kind of what we've been uh, building for the last few months. We're in the last stages of of the building of, uh, of releasing our, our first collection, which will be kind of the genesis token of the community. And uh, essentially we're building a, a, an entire ecosystem. We have tokenomics built in to where users can collect different NFTs that they download, create playlists, stake those playlists, and then rent them out to other users that maybe can't afford that that expensive NFT that, that is now off the market, you know. So there's two, three ways that both artists and collectors can monetize actually the, the, the platform. That's awesome. That's amazing. And you know, it's, it's, it's very exciting because uh, up to this point, I think that um, we've spoken a lot about precisely art um, and, and, you know, um, CryptoPunks, uh, you know. The um, board Apes. Uh, and, and all other, yeah, the board Apes uh, and everything else. Um, but, you know, we've been hearing uh, for a long time about the applicability in other industries, uh, such as music. Um, and it's it's actually amazing to see you guys actually, you know, showing how it's done and and, uh, and paving the way to that. Um, I, I my, my main question would be like, what is what is the future for music in in that space? You know, uh, what do you what do you think? Because you guys are from you know you, you mentioned April last year. Yeah, that's that's insane. As Lisa was saying, it's just so fast paced, isn't it? Like a whole it's it's honestly like a digital revolution. Like it's such a major shift uh, happening as we speak and in such fast pace. Um, so what do you think? Like you know, as as Lisa was saying, sort of like in dog years. What's going to happen in you know this this year that is that you see this evolving into or 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 expanding into uh, that the entertainment industry is really going to uh, um, pick up on? So it's it's going to be a little bit of a hurdle for mass 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 adoption. I think it might it may take a year to two for for NFT music more specifically because people are used to paying licenses for art, uh, collecting fine art, but when you have to kind of almost get the, the the regular consumer to transition from just paying Spotify fifteen bucks a month to get access to everything they might like, um, th that's that's kind of the the biggest hurdle we we anticipate. But that's why we've kind of taken uh, you know lessons from some of the other successful projects that have built in incentives for the users, not just for the artists. Because yes, we want to take care of the artists, but at the same time. 
you want to make sure that your fans, your collectors of these NFTs see the value and continue investing and continue building their portfolio and their collection and then actually are earning from that. Because outside of NFTs, there's really right now, there's no other way for your fan to make money from being your fan. Aside from maybe selling some super rare signed memorabilia that they have from an artist. But just from being a, a fan of yours every day and supporting every project, there's no there's no other method to do this right now. And I think as that message gets more widespread, that's why kudos to you guys for doing something like this and for, for speaking to the community. Because once that message gets across and artists realize that I don't need 3 million streams to make $10,000. And it, and, it, and it takes me six to 12 months to see that money. I need my 1,000 diehard fans to buy my, my next project for five to 10 bucks. And I have real money in my account that I can go back to the studio with and record and create more content. Um, that's really, once that little paradigm shift happens, which is, it's already on the way. Um, but once that happens, I think uh, the future is really going to be very exciting for this space. Yeah, yeah, I can. You know, I've um, I remember when uh, well, back in the day, Taylor Swift would not want to go into uh, Spotify because of the, the the very little you know amount of actual money would go that will go towards you know to to her. Um, and we're we've been always yeah. Yeah, and we've been talking about, say, for instance, how NFTs are built on secondary sales and community and everything else, right? And how people can earn a lifetime of like royalties and everything from from sales that come after that. And it just sounds so obvious, right? Like for artists uh, that are underpaid by these, you know, by some of these tech giants, to kind of like with that Web 3.0 being able to decentralize and and not need any more from uh, 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 those platforms, right? And actually get in touch directly with their fans um, and everyone, you know, gains from that. Right. Um, and uh, it's, you know, fans don't really care if they listen to their favorite artists on Spotify or whatever. They just want to support their artists. Right. Um, and that's um, that that's really amazing. It just seems so logical. Right. It seems like a logical next step to, to how the industry works. You would think, but there's a. Uh... <laughs> yeah. It's there, there's some powers that that be that that you know are they may come on board here soon enough because they see that this is uh, exposing them in a very real way. <clears throat> I'll give you guys a practical example, a real life example of musicians that we work with. They're a band of five. They're called La Tribu Royale, and um, each one of their songs has several hundred thousand views on YouTube. Um, you know, they got their end of the year wrap up from Spotify, which told them your music was played in 90 different countries. You added fans from 30 different countries. You had all, over half a million streams. You had like, over 1500 people sign up to your playlist. All these cool metrics that really when you see it and read it, it makes you feel like I'm a star. You know, I'm, I'm really doing this thing. And then when they went through the, all the stats, I asked them one question. I said, how much money did you guys make off of all of this cool data? And they said $700 amongst a band of five for the year. And mind you, they spent almost $40,000 on audio mixing, production, studio time, uh, music videos. You know what I mean? That was such a real moment for me that it was like, oh, wow. And that's why Spotify can afford to give each artist this customized breakdown of all your data is because you don't see much of it. They're seeing the lion's share. Right? And for them, this is just a drop in the bucket to make you feel like you're really doing something with your art. But you're actually just working a, a daytime job to try to be an artist during the in the way that the current business model is set up. So. Like I said, it's it's going to take a little bit of time, but as more and more people start to realize these things, and even fans, you know, again, I don't need a million of my fans to buy my NFT. I need a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand of my diehard fans. You can still do your traditional releases, and then the checks that come in, they're going to speak for themselves. You're going to realize that your three hundred million uh, streams result. And the equivalent of maybe twenty thousand of your NFT sales. It's actually, 
It's it's really interesting because, I mean, Diego talked about Taylor Swift and I think she's done a lot to raise awareness for the fact that artists don't really get paid a lot at the end of the day. Yes, you feel like they're making lots of money from record sales or, uh, you know, big concerts, but really what comes into their hands at the end of the day isn't what they deserve. Like that, that example to me of saying that a band of five gets $700 after however many, you know, thousands of streams is actually devastating to hear. So I think yeah. the more people that talk about it, then I feel like their fans will go, actually, no, I will go and switch over because I do want to show my support. So I guess the concept of building community is really, I feel like, it, you know, one of the big, the big cornerstones of Web3. Like what advice do you have for artists who are looking to try and build their community and get their fans engaged with their music? Start driving them in that direction. You know, when when streaming first came out, or you see it every time a new song comes out by an artist. They're like, go stream it on Spotify, every platform. You can find it on YouTube. Start doing that. Because what a lot of artists don't realize is that they already have a community amongst their own fans. They may not have a community within the NFT community just yet, <clears throat> which is where we see some some kind of a few failed projects that have come in is that, you know, you need to cater to both. Start engaging the NFT community Maybe buy in first. Like you see, like some of the rappers, like Little Baby bought an ape. I anticipate that he will have some music coming out potentially, maybe as an NFT. But before he did that, he kind of bought into the community. You know what I mean? Uh, similar approach like Adidas had, where they bought an ape, uh, a, a G Money, and, and another one. And before it even did an NFT release, they bought into the community. They, they, they bought land in the sandbox. And they showed commitment to that community. Yes, the traditional Adidas fans came along as well, but you have to kind of engage both. So I would say for any artist that wants to come into this space, get it, get engaged on Twitter, uh, use your social media, follow some of the accounts that promote these kind of works and that talk about this daily, so that you can get, you can get up to speed as to what's happening because there's new projects coming out every day. And then simultaneously, engage your own fan base. Maybe do one of these polls on Instagram that says, hey, how many of you would want to see me do a music NFT? Or how many of you would buy my next song or album as an NFT? And you'll get some actionable metrics based on your, let's say, 2 million followers. I can expect that mm, 100,000 said yes. That's, that's more than enough incentive for you to at least try it. And in addition to that, every artist that, again, I said, we're not here to replace Spotify today or Apple, Apple Music. Those are institutions that have built up their, their place in, in history over years, right? So we're more as an additional avenue. You can have your traditional releases, you can fulfill your contract obligations, but then let's say 10 songs are in your album, you recorded 20 probably. Only 10 made the cut to the album. Take an extra couple, three, and try, try your hand at an NFT music project. Again, but it's incumbent on the artists to also engage their fan base and drive them to that, explain to them why it's significant. You're supporting me directly. You're not supporting the conglomerate that's, you know, putting my music out there. This money's coming straight to me. And instead of splitting pennies, I get to actually get real actionable dollars. And, uh, you know, that's, that's actually um, um, something I was going to ask you. Um, you know, I, I think that if there's like, if there's a community of people that are more than willing to uh, invest money in their favorite bands and in their favorite, like, say, you know, uh, people that they follow, it will be in, in the music industry, right? Like, do I have always bought band T-shirts? Uh, you know, they always want to get a uh, little, you know, like uh, the, the guitar pick from a, from a show or whatever it is. They want to have that uh, sort of like uh, memorabilia from their favorite bands, right? Tickets that people save and and uh you know um and and resell and everything else so um i think that this is a space that makes absolute complete sense um in that regard for instance what do you what do you feel like um because nfts and then you know you can get into you know the metaverse ariana grande doing like Fortnite shows uh ed sheeran releasing a whole uh virtual show on tiktok only and, and stuff like that um do you think it's it's close um it, it's something that's going to happen soon that people are going to be seeing uh, completely digital shows and get you know nfts as like sort of like 
uh, uh, merch from out of uh, out of these events and stuff like that. Do you think that this is a, a, a something that is about to happen, or it's going to be you know maybe a little well, bit? It's down already the path? happening. Like you you mentioned some good examples, um, but I think it'll become more and more of a trend, especially if we keep on experiencing additional lockdowns and travel restrictions. You know, you can't get COVID in the metaverse. Simple as that. Yeah, so, there you go. Um, unless, the, unless, it, unless there is a virtual virus, right, on the metaverse. Yeah, I mean, unless, <laughs> unless people are out there trying to, you know, I guess, like, infect people in the metaverse, which it's against yeah, community rules. Clicking on anyway, dodgy so. links. Dodgy yeah. links on the metaverse. <laughs> so, um, but, but that's the beauty of it is, and you can actually host a show for a million people as opposed to cramming, you know, a couple thousand into an amphitheater. Um, so, and, and, and part of what we're... And maybe we're, maybe make that recording, that session into a recording that then becomes an NFT, right? And then so absolutely. on. Absolutely. And, and we've already talked with uh, several potential partners and existing partners about old footage from recordings that were made back in the 90s at a nightclub. And, you know, and DMX came in and did a show at that club, but the club owner recorded and has the rights to that performance. That's never been seen before. You know, that's NFT able kind of content. And, um, yeah, yeah. And, and part of what we're doing here at play one, uh, is essentially in addition to just having the, the play one NFT player and, uh, an NFT, uh, music marketplace, where combining that with both metaverse and real life events uh, like our genesis collection holders they'll be they'll be able to vote on where we do next uh, other events or where we do kind of uh, some benefit campaigns um collaborative sessions they'll be able to to get access in real life as well as in metaverse to all of these events that we do because essentially uh, we want to do a combination and, and merge the two worlds to so that if we are able to do a live event you're essentially the metaverse will be a mirror image of what's happening at the live event and vice versa. And so if you can't attend the live event, but you're still one of the, the OG NFT holders, you'll be able to attend the metaverse event and vice versa. And, uh, we did, we did a test case of this, uh, in El Salvador this, this past November, uh, we plugged into the Latin American Bitcoin conference and essentially did brought in a, a whole stage and did two nights of live shows there where we featured some international artists that we brought in. and uh, But the focus was the local Salvadorian artists, right? And to give them some stage time in front of an international audience, which is what this Latin American Bitcoin conference was. It was people from all over the world. So yeah, the, the goal was to essentially plug in to that conference and, and A, share, I mean, all, all, every tech, tech fan or, or NFT crypto guy listens to music, right? It's music is a ubiquitous tool. So for us, it, it was like a natural gateway to introduce people that maybe are not even in the tech world into NFTs, into blockchain by realizing, oh, my favorite artist is not doing this. Their next project is coming out there. Let me check it out. This sounds interesting. It kind of lifts that 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 veil and shroud of mystery, right? And mystique that's around this technology still and in a lot of people's uh, minds. So that's why we did that. We we uh, we spent a, a good bit of time in El Salvador over the last several months. We were there on Bitcoin Day when they adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. Um, that during our week there, we formed some good relationships. Came back in October and met with the Minister of Tourism, Minister of Culture, and were able to kind of de devise this plan for how we can integrate into the existing Latin American Bitcoin conference that was taking place there. And, and provide the music and entertainment arm and kind of, you know, inherently promote what we're trying to do in the space. But more so, the idea was to, uh, like I said, use that as a, as a testing ground to what, to what we want to do moving forward within our community. So we want our, our community members to be able to decide where do we go next? Where do we do a show next? Um, by having the OG token, you'll be able to attend wherever it is in the world. Just come, you know. Um, and we did a, a benefit kind of project there um, where some of the artists that we flew in, artists, producers, uh, you know, that work with world-renowned artists like Ozuna, Anuel. You know, we focus on Latin because we were in El Salvador, naturally. But uh, do, do you know who Ozuna is, Lisa? No, what? Do you know who Ozuna is? I have no idea. Oh, you see, <laughs> you need... You need 
You need to get your reggaeton on. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Even if you don't understand the reggaeton, it like it speaks to the soul, you know? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But so we brought these guys in to to essentially work with the local artists and and collaborate on a on a on a project together that then we're gonna mint as an NFT. It's part of our roadmap that's gonna come out in April. So we we had them uh, essentially do a song camp for a week where these producers and, and songwriters and, and, and performers from Peru, L.A., Puerto Rico, Miami, Mexico, they, they worked with the local Salvadorian artists because when we went there in El Salvador, the first time we realized that in the top 50 Spotify chart in El Salvador were zero Salvadorian artists. So we wanted to use what we're doing almost as a promotional tool to really kind of create a bit of a social impact and, and give these guys a platform in front of an international audience. And so we want to take that concept and replicate it moving forward. And, and then our community will decide where do we do the next project? They'll be the, the community will be able to support that project. So maybe instead of us going after traditional sponsors, it could be the community, a community sponsored event. And then whoever participates in that will get, will get a percentage of the NFT sale on the back end. Um, so we're, we're kind of devising these creative ways to engage a, the fans, and also give a platform for artists that maybe don't get recognized, um, you know, the way they that's should. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing. fantastic. Yeah, good on you. And that's what I love about Web3. I feel like it's a lot more democratic and it really celebrates community and gives access where access, you know, probably wasn't able to be had before, um, which is great. So I guess just to finish up, uh, we sort of sp spoke about this just before the interview, but what do you have to say to people who think that NFTs are just a scam? Because I get that a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just like, why are you paying this much? Why are people paying this much for a JPEG, like millions of dollars? I'm like, where do I start? Yeah. <laughs> what I would tell them is uh, go on Google and look for all the big brands that you follow and support that are diving into this space headfirst. And then maybe they're trying to scam you too, or maybe they have been all along. But, or maybe this is actually just the new age of the internet. This is the new cell phones that are coming out. This is the new streaming coming out. This is a, a new way of doing things online. And if you're skeptical, then educate yourself, research. You know, major publications are, are, are now writing about this in, ver in, a, in a lot of detail, in depth. Uh, Rolling Stones, uh, Forbes. Every major publication, both tech and business alike, is now talking about this. It's talking about Web3 and explaining it to people that, because uh, I'm sure just like you, Lisa, and, and Diego and myself, a lot of people get this, these questions. And a lot of people hear this commentary from, uh, and it literally comes from a place of a lack of information and a lack of self-education on the subject. So that would be my biggest advice is, you know, be a skeptic, but do your research first, you know? You know, uh, uh, Congress in the U.S. was uh, 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 just talking about blockchain, right? And I heard someone saying, you know, if the government is, is talking about it, then, you know, you should probably pay close attention to it. I'll give you guys another real-life example. Miami-Dade County is the first county in the United States that has a crypto task wow. force. Wow, there you go. What? A local government-appointed body that reviews crypto-related projects and suggestions and makes recommendations to the county as to how to best navigate that. El Salvador adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. This is not as like, call it what you want, but uh, you know, it's a revolutionary time that we're getting to live through and, and hopefully more and more people start to realize that. And, and I have one last question on my part. Um, you know, how do you see businesses um, just like they do now, you know, the metaverse, buying land, like you mentioned, um, um, you know, developing these uh, pr art projects. How do you see in uh, companies that are not in the music industry leveraging off of, 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 of entertainment and music and everything as they are doing now with art, um, you know, in the NFT space? Uh, well, I've seen a number and I know that there's many more coming. Uh, there have already NFT tickets for venues, sports, concerts. That's already a thing. There's already contracts being locked in. Do you see, do you see, for instance, um, artists, artist collabs, maybe, you know, like, uh, you know, Snoop Dogg working with, uh, another brand and kind of like, oh, you know, like, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Or, or even, even, uh, brands buying an NFT, uh, such as an ape and then using that as their own mascot of sorts. 
Um, like Adidas, that's how they entered the metaverse is they bought three NFTs that, because with a lot of these NFT projects, you own the, the image and likeness rights for that unique NFT. Um, not the entire collection, but your ape number 10, you can do whatever you want. You can make a movie with your board ape as the main character. I have a question. As, as, a, as someone from law, um, can you actually get sued if you right click and save a, an NFT? Uh, you would have to check the the terms and again. This is not legal advice. This is, uh, <laughs> but but definitely check the terms and conditions because a lot of NFTs are distributed in different ways, and uh, and and as a, an additional not legal advice but a heads up, um, I caution a lot of businesses that are that are looking at an NFT as a a way to give away equity in something, right? Because then you wade into these deep, muddy waters of secu U.S. security law. Um, is it a security? And if so, does the IRS regulate it? Uh, and the, so, in the SEC. So, these are things that are, you know, uh, and I see even some other companies and and and, and artists trying to fractionalize uh, percentages of their copyrights as NFTs and. I, we've been fortunate to have a stellar legal team at Reed Smith. Um, they, they were one of the first firms to do a deep dive white paper on uh, on the metaverse. And um, you want to you want to kind of stay away from things like that because then how do you track all of that? Uh, uh, a like you know you're going to have to be doing all the books. You're going to have to be complying with copyright law to make sure that the the exact percentage of that fraction gets delivered to whoever the owner is of that fraction of the copyright. And then again, you're still wading into the SEC rules as to, is this a security? Um, so what we're, the, the approach we've taken is essentially it's like when the CDs were being uh, sold, it's, it's a, it's a license that you get to enjoy for yourself, your friends at a party, whatever. But if let's say a radio station buys one of our NFTs and decides to play it on the radio, then they need to register that as a public performance and pay that artist that public performance royalty. So the system is built to to kind of handle this stuff now. It's just, you know, there's there's a few pitfalls that maybe uh, I would say legislation hasn't fully caught up to just yet, but uh, are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. definitely coming soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I always, um, uh, I don't know if it happens in your country, uh, but in my country, Coca-Cola, every year, gathers around the biggest artists and they kind of like made that coca-cola tune uh and they play all over the radio and stuff like that so you know like that's the kind of stuff that i don't know because music is so embedded in our lives right um one of the if there's one app that brazilians open every day uh is spotify uh and it's just music it's just you know it's all it's all around us right so uh it's it's really exciting that you guys are you know uh, again uh trailblazing that space with nft it, honestly it was uh really uh you know eye-opening as well and I, I i had a really good time thank you Bowen, so much i appreciate you guys having me on